Charlie's life. I believe that the first time I see my grandfather could possibly be the last time I see my grandfather. The thing that was going through my mind coming out here was he could pass away while I'm out here. The way most people are going to look at it is, you know, why would you take your time to go see Charles Manson? But in my life and in my world, it's way different than that. I was there for my grandmother. I was there for my father. I was there for my dad. I was at their deathbed. He won't stop with, with Manson. He's going to do what he's going to do. and I. I can't stop him. If my husband was alive today, there wouldn't be none of this, because he just flat out said no. Hey, Mom, I just wanted to call you and just tell you how much I love you and, and, how, and how thankful I am that you're so supportive with me, you know, with everything I'm doing. Well, Jason, I wasn't, and then you know, I thought about it and thought about it, and I thought, well, he is an old man, and I just didn't want him um, trying to twist your mind or think, because I know the things he says on TV are off the wall, and I just didn't want you um, involved in that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're a grown man, and uh, he's an old man, and... Uh, I don't see the harm anymore. Well, I think if you, if you do get to see him, and I hope you do, and, and for his sake, I hope he, he gets to see you. Yeah. And I hope you have a good, uh, a good visit, that it'll put some closure on a lot of this. Yes. I got to go, Mama. Huh? I got to go. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Love you. I love you, too. I had fought with Jason over all of this for a long, long time, till I finally just gave up. There's something wrong with him, people. And I just don't like the fact that Jason is around them. I'm going to stand up here so I can be eye to eye with you. <laughs> JJ, John Michael Jones, has been a friend of my grandfather's for 15 plus years. And he shared with me how he really truly loved my grandfather. And it was moving for me. It opened me up to think maybe there is a different side of Charles Manson. And yep. right now is, is the time because it's coming to the end. This is it. We ain't got much time left. Yeah. So I say it's time we go get justice. And oh. that's getting you in there to see him. Open him door. Talking to Jason on the phone is one thing. But when I actually met Jason, and Manson's the same way in the sense that when he looks in your eyes, he can call bullshit from a mile away. So who better to to have fighting for for his grandfather? Rock on. All right, let's do it, brother. I think it was important to have, to have JJ going to the prison with me because he shared a lot of information with my grandfather back and forth, and I knew that the research that he's done working with the prison system that he had an edge above me, so that would work on my side. And for me, if I could just get Jason in front of Charlie, I knew in my heart that Charlie would have just loved him. Trying to get to understand the medical end of being in prison, who was on his list, who was on his medical to receive information or ask information, and I couldn't get a straight answer out of anybody. This right here says uh, sometimes emergencies or hardships, visits are allowed in the handbook for Corcoran, California prison. It states if you have a family member in prison um, that is deathly ill, that you don't have to go through all the procedures that they just have to okay it. Open the doors. Yeah, I mean, Open them it up. says right there. Look, Open them up. Unexpected visitor. Bang, and this came right off their website. Yeah, yeah. And CDC, they, yeah. And they told me on the phone. Like, be prepared. Your grandfather has a whole new set of rules that apply to him. But I'm telling you, the injustice in this case, not just the, the legal part of it, but just from the prison aspect. I mean, justice as far as giving him his mail, stop creating rules that, you know, anything Manson wanted, there was a rule he couldn't have it. I mean, 
they have a room full of his stuff there now. The guitars and things that meant a lot to him that they just confiscate. The deem it contraband. You gotta understand something. Your grandpa was raised up in the prison systems. He was raised by the likes of Alvin Carpus, Frank Costello, Frankie Carbo, Mickey Cohen. These are gangsters that your grandfather was raised up with. Are you listening? Yep. All right, Alcatraz. There was a guy in there called Alvin Carpus. He was from Spain. Okay. He was kind of one of my fathers. Taught me a little bit on the guitar. And he gave me wisdom. Your grandfather has been in prison so long. His mentality is that of a big tough. guy. He's gonna be. Yeah. I don't need you to protect me. You know, he's gonna be play that tough guy role. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. That's just his way of life. But behind yeah. the scenes, when that Manson mask comes off and the cameras aren't rolling and he knows you're not recording his phone call, he'll tell, like he said to me, I need someone here. I need someone to, to let this prison know they can't just do what they want with me. He wanted me to move out to California. I said, man, you know as well as I do, I got I, I got three kids and a wife. He's like, I know, man. He's like, but I, I got I, I got everything you need. I got a place for you to stay. He said, All the money's up here. Everything you need's right here. You know. And, and, and what did you say? I said, I, I don't I don't want nothing. Good, because I, I, that might have been a test. I remember my first visit visiting Manson. He he told me. You know what's good for you. You'll turn and run and get as fucking far away from me as you can. And I laughed, and, and I noticed that he wasn't laughing. I don't think a lot of people know that Manson fought cancer for many years. Charlie was told he didn't have long to live many times. You need to let him know that you want to be here for him. I don't want nothing from you other than a relationship with my grandpa. And he's so used to being used up since a little boy. He told me a story about sitting at a window for two years at a boy's home, didn't commit no crime, but was there because no one wanted him. And he Wait said to me, his mom or his uncle and, and nobody came. Your grandfather's world is unlike any other world I've ever experienced. His way of protecting you, Jason, is to push you away. And you may think by him, he'll get on the phone and insult the hell out of you. He'll call you stupid. Oh, yeah, he is. You're incompetent and brain dead. Fuck you. Then you're gonna get mad at me for telling you the truth. But that's his way of trying to push you away because he doesn't want you wrapped up in that world. There it is, brother. That's where your grandfather is, behind those fences, bro. That's how close we are to him right now. All right, bro, Corcoran State Prison. Game on. Game on. When we pulled up and we was going straight to the front gate, I was waiting for guns to be pulled. You know, <laughs> turn around and never come back is what I expected. How you doing, sir? Good, how you doing? I need to get to the visiting center. What are you here for? I need to see my grandfather. He's in the hospital. You need all your, all your identifications? OK. Now, what's this about? I'm here to see my grandfather. He's in the hospital, and I brought my documentation to uh, show that you know uh -huh. that I'm his grandson. It, and it, it, and then I was looking through the uh, through the documentation for the visitation, and it says on here for me to ask for the sergeant so that um, I can fill the proper paperwork out. You know, because oh, he's okay. in the hospital right now, and and, and he's got early stages. Who's your grandfather? Charles Manson. Charles Manson? Yes, sir. Okay. It's just hard for me to, I see him in his last days and it's just hard for me to see what's going on and not be able to help him be there. Be there for and, his and, yes, and I understand that, but uh, we still got procedures we got to follow and and, uh, and you still have to go through the process of getting cleared for the busy and all that. And, but once you submit that paperwork, I mean, uh, you can come every weekend. No problem. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I just, I just don't seem, I, I just don't seem living, you know, much longer, and, and I just want to, I just want to be beside him. That's all. Okay. All right. And, that, we'll and that, that, that's understandable. If he's got, no, he can still, he still thinks yeah. on his own. He's not, he's not as bad as they're making it sound like it is. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can't divulge anything yeah. to you, but I can let yeah. you know he's doing all right. That's so. beautiful. Thank you for that. That's incredible. I just opened up somehow. I think it was spiritually because my mind was, you know, was wrapped around being on the inside. Without him sending you an application with his signature on it, that's just our policy. We don't allow we don't allow visitation like that. Even family? It, it doesn't matter. He has to request those people to be authorized as visitors. Okay. Once he sends that request to you, you'd send it back to us, and then we'd process you. But it has to be at his request only. Got it. We can't we can't force him to take a visit with somebody. No. And no. I'm not, and that's what I'm saying. So no, if, if I just took your application. That would be me forcing him, you know what I mean? He's in the hospital, he's on his deathbed. You know, like I had everything. I had all my documentations from when I was a boy to link everybody up to who my father is. And, you know, my grandfather had his set of roles at the prison and everybody else had their own. I, I'm so proud of you right now, bro. You're getting me all choked up. I, mean, I had to open up a little bit. I, had you, to... I know, but listen, but you know and I know why we're here, and it's for the right thing. It's to love him in the final stages of his life, to let him know someone's here that gives a fuck that cares. Yeah. You know what the best feeling was, though? Right before the conversation was over, man, the one, you know, the one guard looked at me and said, Jason, I want you to know that your grandfather's Even doing okay. I'm not supposed to be telling you. I want that... you to know that your grandfather's doing okay. That's right, man. That, that was the best, you know, I looked at him with a whole different they accepted per you. perspective and respect. It's gonna get back to him that you were at this gate today. You mock my words, mock my words. JJ's pretty good with, uh, with his words and speaking from the heart. And I think it was important for my grandfather to know that him and I were out there. It wasn't just me, but it was somebody that knew how to get word to him. And I want him to understand that, that every step I'm doing is to benefit his last wishes. That's right. Bro. You know, if his last wishes are to um, have his ashes in my corner, in my house, yeah. spread across the river, uh, I'm going to do what he wants me to. That's right, brother. I just told him, Jason, if you don't do it, they're going to throw him away like trash. And Jason said, that's not going to fucking happen. I'm not going to let them throw my grandfather in the trash. What do I have to do? And I, I said, we have to get you as the next to kin. I filed the proper paperwork to prove to the courts that I am kin. The reality is, it's me. And you're the blood of that. I feel like I'm on a journey. I just really want to grasp a hold of what people think from every side about my grandfather. While I'm in Los Angeles, California, I want to meet as many people as I can that could fill me in on my grandfather's path who he was as a man from both sides of the coin. I want to figure out why people look at him as an icon, look at him as a god. It was 1967 and the summer of love. Charlie had just gotten out of federal prison in LA. And when it came time to parole him, he said that he didn't want to be paroled because uh, prison uh, was his home. And they literally had to escort him to the uh, gate, front gate of the prison and boot him out. He took a bus up to the Bay Area, and he was drawn to Berkeley. And Mary Brenner worked at the library at UC Berkeley, and she and Charlie met, and Mary got pregnant. Charles Manson wanted to put together a group of people to basically come along with him, this anti-establishment, peaceful, loving, sex-filled and drug-filled family. And he picked up these troubled, lost souls along the way wherever he could. And he picked them out because they had mommy or daddy issues. And he became kind of a father figure to them, a Christ-like figure to them. And he called them his children. And one by one, he pulled them in. I met Charlie for the first time uh, at a party uh, through a couple of friends that took me there. It was magical. Charles Manson had, you know, like shoulder length, wavy hair. He was in his early 30s. He was very playful, played the guitar. He was a fairly good musician, and I think he had some aspirations that he would make some money from his songs. 
Charlie used his music to help, you know, indoctrinate us. He just had this way of convincing people of, you know, who they were and what they could do for him and what he could do for them. And he had sex with them and told them whatever he thought they needed to hear, and they loved him. And so he just really was cutting us all off. You don't need your mom and dad. He loved, you know, being super isolated. The place where the Manson family lived was actually a movie set. It was called Spawn Ranch because it was actually the Spawn Movie Ranch, and that was its official name, named after the owner, George Spawn. And in turn for living there for free, they helped take care of the ranch and took the horses for rides and the, gave trail rides to visitors and basically lived on the farm in the middle of nowhere where they felt like they could live however they wanted. I didn't know who I was. I mean, I was so much, you know, a Charlie follower at that point that I didn't have my own mind. You know, he was definitely the one that led this group of people into doing what they did. Innocent people were, were murdered for the reason Manson and the family wanted to start a race war. The idea of, of someone striving as best um, that he could, you know, nearly 50 years ago, to spark a racial apocalypse with Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter was the name of a Beatles song, but for Charles Manson, it was basically, you know, Armageddon. Charlie was sure that the Beatles were like these four prophets that were communicating with him that, you know, Helter Skelter was coming down, you know, uh, the Blackbird song had something to do with the black man. Blood written on the walls of the Sharon Tate mansion and somehow implicating black revolutionaries who would be happen to passing through the neighborhood or something. The one thing that we do know about Charles Manson is that he was racist. This crazy helter-skelter scenario that some people today still don't believe is really true, but it came out in testimony and Vincent Bugliosi ended up calling it in court helter-skelter, but even Manson called it helter-skelter. It was a real thing. I don't believe in helter-skelter or Vincent Bugliosi's narrative. I never have. I believe he was convicted of things he wasn't guilty of. Here we go, this is you walking for the first time, basically on what- For me to see this man, Jason Freeman, Charles Manson's grandson, and the only thing he knows is what I consider to be ignorance. I felt really, really super bad for him and just because I don't believe that Charles Manson is that person. So here now we're coming down onto like the ranch proper, the famous view of the horizon. Billy is completely passionate, 100% on my grandfather's bandwagon. I think it's very important for me to understand my grandfather through other individuals who were close to him. The more I learn about my grandfather, the more I can learn about myself from the inside out. You know, it's spiritual. Down here would be, you know, the two rows of Western towns. And then all the way down there, the horse corral, we had a driveway yeah. right here behind us. There's a very famous picture of Susan Atkins standing here on her tippy toes with the mailbox with those rocks behind her. Okay. Oh, well, here you have it. The famous uh, Life Magazine wave cave, I guess as it's come to be known, a spot everyone likes to come to so much because of that iconic picture. You know, was my grandfather here for that picture? He was not here for the picture. That was after his arrest. Okay, the, the photographers came out here sometime, you know, later and staged kind of stage sh shots of the family at the ranch. Okay. And so that was that. So from what I heard, a story like a past mouth to mouth was that he said, "What that rock over there? That didn't. That was just a rock, you know." But I, I imagine some people enjoyed this spot. He's thinking all this bad stuff he's carrying with the rest of his confusion. I just tell him, "Hey, dude, you don't have to believe this. Like, you know, there's some things you ought to know maybe about your grandfather and." what could have happened, not what they say happened. You talk about asking if any places have any uh, special significance. I would imagine that this place would have held some of the best memories for him. Why don't I you like pull up spot. a seat on the rock, man? All right. This rock? <sighs> this is the spot where your grandfather and his friends would come most of the time to play their music a lot of the times at night. A spot where a musician, any musician, makes their music. Yeah. 
is a, a really sacred spot to any musician, and this is a rock that has now come to be known as Charlie's Rock. Yeah, this is the spot where him and all his friends would come with all their instruments, okay. party, play their songs, write their songs. I never thought as a kid growing up that I'd be sitting on the same rock that my grandfather played on. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you something else about it. You know, a rock carries vibrations, right? Almost like an amplifier. So if you think of your grandfather sitting here playing those songs, it's got to give you a rush. You get any some of the songs that room? I got a couple of your albums. Most of that stuff is just stuff that fell off the edge of the table. Uh, stand up for just one or scoot over a little. You see this right here? What do you think that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's uh, CM. Urban legend is that he actually did carve his initials there in that rock. I appreciate you bringing me here, man. This is a historical spot, obviously, and um, I got to see something I've never seen before. Every step of my journey opens up my eyes to something new. I highly appreciate it. Well, I want you to remember that anytime you're feeling something else, you can always come back to this rock and sit right back down on it and get the same feeling that you're having right now, brother. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Yeah, like guys like JJ and Billy and their passion for my grandfather was immensely high. And they had me thinking that my grandfather is innocent. People in general come at my grandfather from different angles. You know, JJ comes at him with overwhelming love. Billy comes at him with injustice. You know, we got to hammer down on the system, you know. And then you have Grey Wolf. We use these to sort of get the word out. My initial connection to Charlie and the family just came from a, a random meeting with uh, two people that knew him well, and uh, they were the most righteous, beautiful people I ever met, and as soon as I was with them uh, on a daily basis, I felt like, like I was home. And outside the court, on the sidewalk, some more of Manson's followers were holding their daily vigil. Grey Wolf's been there since 1970. I think he crawled on the ground to the courthouse with the girls. You can't get much closer than that. We made some pamphlets of uh, people that were supporting Charlie and visiting and stuff. And these booklets, a lot of them had to do with Atwal, which was what Charlie was all about. ATWA, air, trees, water, animals. Charlie wrote a statement basically sort of explaining his take on Atwal and where he came, how he got to where he was, thinking about the land and the air and the water and the trees and the animals. Charlie's quote, work to show, teach, preach, set, prove to the ones you love and work to redeem soul. All computers set for Atwa. Never lie and we are Atwa. So to me, it's a moment of fulfillment right here. We're standing here, uh, everybody on the planet right now, we have choices that are gonna make a big difference for people that come behind us. I I stand I stand beside Atwa. I, um, there is no reason not to. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the truth. Meeting somebody like Jason, it's not something you go, oh, here's five things that you should know right away and you'll be fine. It's, you know, it's about living and uh, being truthful. The sun creates everything. I believe in the moon. I believe in the ocean, the tide, the whales, the bears, and the woods. I believe in everything, man. I'm gonna introduce you to a guy that's known your grandfather since the early 90s. Not too many people know him better than this guy. This is George Stimson. He's the author of Goodbye Helter Skelter. Hi, Jason. Jason nice to Freeman. meet you. Very is yours nice to meet you, you, sir? Yeah. Well, I first met Charlie, I think, visiting in, in uh, 1991. I was pursuing this case for years. Other than reading about him superficially in news reports at the time, I would have thought, yes, crazed hippie cult leader, but I would say the first time I read Helter Skelter, I could see that that wasn't true and that that was a gross misrepresentation of what went on. So that was the thing that initially got me interested in it because I wanted to find out what really went on. I visited him uh, almost 200 times over over 10 years, and so I had a lot of uh, chances to get to know him in different circumstances and see how he acted different ways and I acted different ways. It's not like, you know, people say, oh, you went in and, uh, you know, he 
brainwashed you into writing this book. And it's like, no, I don't want to put your grandfather down, but Bully Osi says he's a master con man. And I would have to disagree with that. He's not that good. You know, and that's part of the problem he got uh, in trouble back then was helping people out, having all those people around him and helping them because he just, that's his nature. And it would be hard to summarize it except to say that he was not a, a, a cult leader. It was not a cult. Uh, he didn't have uh, hypnotic powers over these people, that they were acting on their own. And they acted more as a result of circumstances rather than being told what to do by someone else. I held a grudge on him uh, um, for the death of my, of, of my father due, due to an article um, that was in the newspaper that, you know, Manson's son visits Manson and then he blows his brains out. He's very guarded with his emotions. He's very guarded with everything, really, you know. Yeah, he, he wouldn't say to me anything about your dad dying. That's not really something that I need to know from him. So what can you tell me that uh, would be something that I can hold on to? And... Well, I don't want to try to uh, whitewash him, but really how good he is. And I'm not saying he's a good guy. He's a terrible guy. He's both. He's all of it. He's, he's good yeah, he's and good bad. And evil. He's good and evil. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I would certainly not want to be on his bad side, but then why would I ever be on his bad side? You know, I'm not going to get there. Yeah. I don't get on bad people's sides. I'm not on, in this world to make enemies. So, That's what I try to tell people about me. I'm like, yeah, just, just yeah. stay on my good side, man. We're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's fine. He's a very, he's a very good guy. And he's a very bad guy, just so you realize that. Yeah. So he has a lot of experience with people, you know, from being in prison and relating with people in a kind of forced environment for so mm -hmm. long. But he is, uh, I'm not gonna say deficient in some ways, but he, he doesn't have a lot of worldly experience, but he has an incredible amount of wisdom. I wanted him to know my impressions of the man, um, just to let him know, to give him a more rounded view of him. You know, I think what you're doing is right. It's coming from your heart and your soul, and it's the same heart and soul that's in him. So I hope you get together. I think you should. I have my own opinion. It's a lot different than Jason's when it comes to these people. And when Jason started talking to them, it was almost like he was being pulled from what he thought and he knew into this whole crazy just other world. I wish I could have went with him to California. Now I wished I would have just to see for myself, you know what I mean? Because I'd have been like, nah, you're not going around these people. All of this extra information and, and he's innocent and these other people who are air, trees, water, animals. This was definitely the background noise. Honor to meet you. Okay, thank you. Honor's all mine. I get back from California. I just switched from one job to another job, the same profession. I got to travel back up to Ohio, back in the oil field, staying with my mom. My wife's back home. She has our kids. It's been difficult. Being on the road, it isn't easy. To accept this call, say or dial five now. Me to visit the one on one challenge. They're going to say, you can't come in. We don't know you. You're not on the list. You're not approved. And they make up a thousand rules, man. You'd have to murder about 35 people before you could even start. Because I got ego trips that just despise me. They despise everything I'm about because they're jealous, coward, punk. I know that. You know, when I told JJ, I told John, John, I said, I said, if I got a, if I got to knack somebody out to be beside my grandfather, I said, hey, that's what I'll, that's what I'll do. Your grandfather don't want that. No. Your grandfather don't want to do with that. Your grandfather wants you to raise your kids and have a good life. I'm doing that. Hey, did you get my visitation form yet that I sent to you? Did you get my form? No. No. That's what I'm telling you. I know. You're dealing with super bad people, man. I know that. These people, you are 
Hey. I got to go, folks. Have a good day. Uh, hey, man, I love you. Man. Huh? Yeah. I'm in here. What are you doing? Heating up stuff for your grandma. I got to get her her supper. I made it back in. I made it through another day. <laughs> <laughs> you made it another day. Uh -huh. All right. Love you. Love you. Oh, making some food, huh? I just happened to be starving. Did you hear the latest news about, about, about Grandpa? What now? He's back in the hospital again. So he is in the hospital? Yeah. Is he uh, bad sick this time or? Well, he's, um, last year I found out that he had cancer. Um, um, and uh, he's bleeding from the inside out. And, Jason, uh, I didn't, I didn't know he had cancer. Yeah, yep. And um, I don't know. I just wish, <laughs> I just wish something would give. I wish I would get a break to uh, be able to be able to go see him. I mean, it, it, it could be. Is that what he's going to die from, his cancer? He could die any day. He, yeah. I mean, if he's back in that hospital again a year later, same thing happening, and he's got he's got cancer and he's not he's not going through any kind of radiation or, or, or removal of the of the cancer. Yeah, I mean. It, Do they take care of you in prison when you're sick like that? It's just a period. It's just a matter of time, you know. Yeah, they'll 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 take care of you, but I, I just don't see him. You know, see him taking care of a 82-year-old man, a 83-year-old man. You know, yeah. I think he's given up, Mom. I think he's just he's just had enough. I want to update our breaking news right now. Charles Manson, one of the most notorious murder masterminds in U.S. history, has died at the age of 83. When I when I learned of my grandfather's death, I was at my mom's house. I had to let my wife know, and then in the in the same breath, I had to had to let her know that I didn't I didn't have that job in Ohio that we take care of our family with. There was two major things when I woke up. I didn't have a job, and I lost my grandfather. Jason was emotional because you know he tried to get out there to see his grandpa father and he, he never got to do that but I think he was prepared for it it's done it's just done people that that like him or wow or worship him or whatever you know they're probably not gonna really go around my son now because uh, Jason wanted to make sure he was buried and he didn't want him to be exploited anymore one thing I'll never forget like put a picture of, of Charlie and it said burn in hell I didn't believe it at first, you know, because I've heard it a hundred times before. But then once I saw the news where Deborah Tate said it, once I saw Deborah Tate say, I knew it was real. When she said that the prison had called her, <laughs> the prison calls Deborah Tate, but they don't call Jason. When I talked to JJ on the phone, he, he was just in tears, man. He, he uh... Yeah, you know, his raspy voice, man, he's gone, bro, he's gone. The thought of him laying up in that fucking funeral home right now, feeling unclaimed, it's just not gonna happen. Bro. No. I'll die before I let that happen. I wonder if he would have got to see him, how that would have turned out. If my son had actually gotten through to him, that we are family and, you know, you do have people that genuinely worry about you and care about what might happen to you. I don't think Charles had that his whole life. So are you heading to California? Yeah, that's, uh, that's our next plan. We have to uh, secure the remains of, of uh, Grandpa. You think you'll get him? I don't see how they can stop me. We, we got the proper paperwork, and we're, we're on our way. I think you're doing the right thing.
if an inmate dies and they don't have a will, they, they cremate them and throw them away. And I talked to Charlie about that, and uh, he said, in the trash is where I belong. And he refused. For a year, we fought to have him sign, but you couldn't make Charlie do shit. I want to go to California and claim my grandfather's remains, and I asked JJ to be with me. I met up with JJ in Venice, and we went over a game plan so we could see what to do next. God, man. Nice to see you. How you hold up? You know, I just... hate that we have to meet under these circumstances, bro, but you know, we got things we got to take care of. And yeah. I say we because you're going to win this, man. You're the only legal descendant of Charles Manson. We got to meet the lawyer. We got to get to the courthouse. Yep. And with the proper paperwork, we go get your grandfather, and we bring him home. Once you get his body, what are you going to do? This is what I want to do. This is me personally. This is everybody else off to the side. There's, there's, there's five people, five good friends of my, of my grandfather. And I want to do a ceremony, and I want to give each of my grandfather's friends something to remember him by and always have. Wow. That's, that's, that's my goal. You're going to be under the microscope, brother. There's going to be a media frenzy when you walk out those doors with your grandfather in your head. There's going to be haters. There's going to be more death threats. You're sick. You're going to hear all that. Oh, yeah. Jason said, well, you know, I'm next of kin, and, and I'm going to do what's right, and I'm going to claim the remains. And once that was made public, that he was stepping out and was going to do that, social media kind of exploded on us. Our local newspaper has a, a Facebook page, and of course, he was plastered all over the front page. We were called everything from trash to a anything you could think of. Pretty nasty, actually. When you get close to, to someone like Charles Manson, you get all this, you get attention, and sometimes it's, it's real scary. JJ and I were heading up to Bakersfield to Clay, my grandfather's body. I got a call from Audrey, and she was not happy. I don't want to put more more pressure on you. I don't. Yeah, well, you do. But make me think about it first. OK? You're out there fucking doing whatever. I'm, I'm trying to keep my head on. Very, very unhappy right now. And you're fucking support. Like, can you keep it out fucking bills? Fucking shit piling up on top of me. You know, there's something wrong when you have formed your entire life around following one person. I mean, these people, well, you're going to do this, or, or we think you should do that. It w there was enough information given to keep him there. I felt like he was being drawn off the path that he knew he wanted because all these people who supposedly were these close friends, you know, knew what was best because they knew Charlie. So, you know, Jason felt compelled to, to take the route that they were telling him to take. It's been difficult. I've had a lot of challenges. Oh, the strain on the relationship is, you know, just like it feels like you just pull them ropes tight and, and you think them ropes are gonna break. I just remember multiple times being away from home that the ropes just, you can hear him pulling tight. I believe in my higher power that me and my wife are going to come through this Show and become road, stronger. Man. You know, if I can suggest something, I would say that play a little mind game with them and say that um, I was told that the Kearns County was trying to get in touch with the next of kin, and the next of kin is here. My name is Jason Freeman. I'm the grandson, and I would like any information that you can give me. And if you can't, can you at least point me in the right direction? Okay. And, and that I would just go from there. Imagine, man, he's right here. We're this close to him. Kern County Corner. We're in the right place, brother. After you. Hello. OK. Thanks, ma'am. Hi. Hi, ma'am. How are you? I'm OK. Just trying to. Walk through some rough steps, you know, whenever someone passes away, it's just... Yeah, I hear that. It's not easy. Person, yes, ma'am. I recognize you. <laughs> Good seeing you. They were looking for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
I got I got word that you guys were looking for me to uh, uh, fill the proper documentation out for my grandfather, Charles Manson. Well, next to Ken, he's the next to Ken. Yep. Please, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I don't, like, I personally, I don't know anything about Mr. Manson, but he's just a person to me. Like, yep. I know his past or what he did, but, you know, I don't, I don't know anything about it. Like, people say, I live on Details, road, yeah. Uh, just. Yeah. I try to leave the details out of it, too, especially in a, a time like this. It's just, uh, you know, I'm here for one thing, and that's to. Uh, Get, you know, give my grandfather uh, a resting place. Yeah, that's all we all want at the end of the day. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, come on back. Yeah, thank you. Good luck, fella. <sighs> yes. Establishing who is the legal next of kin. Yes, ma'am. It's great meeting you. Uh, yeah, brother. Walking out of the coroner's office, man, it was the first time, um, First time in a long time where, when you go into a, a place of the of authority, where you walk into certain rooms, and you can actually walk back out freely because there's nothing holding you there. A weight that was holding me down for the longest time was a lot of people didn't believe who I was. Like they they didn't expect me to show up today and just yeah. hand them paperwork. They expected to get something in the mail, and uh, she said, "Well." We just have to go through the people that, that have stepped up and see who is family and see who isn't. You, but man. all your documentation ha has shown us that that you are related. And yes! That... Well, yeah, uh, proud of you, man. And for them to recognize me and my, and my grandfather, as being family, that's all I needed. I was happy. Huge step for, for the good guys. And being the decision makers, that looks good in your favor, bro. That you took the initiative to come in. Guarantee yeah. you're the only one to do that. After I left the coroner's office, uh, I, um, I had this satisfaction on the inside. And I've already laid enough on Audrey, and she's already consumed enough of what's going on around her. I, I had to make the right phone call. You know, who am I supposed to call and tell this exciting news to? Well, it's exciting to me. It may not be exciting to the rest of the world, but I knew my mom could respect it. Let's see what mom's up to. Hello? Mother. Hey, how's it going? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just sitting here. Uh -huh. I'm watching TV, and I just wanted to know how your day went before I went to bed. Yeah. Things went well. We we actually went to the uh, Kern County Coroner, and um, they actually let me in the back, and I was able to show all the all the court documentations that that you saved for me from birth, and all the stuff that you saved, Mom, and you and you gave me. Uh, I use today. And was, have all the answers. <laughs> and have all the answers. Tried to get a hold of Audrey. Uh huh. That's where I want to talk to. Uh, before I went to bed, she said she was going to bed. She never answered me back. No. Uh, no, whenever... She has some hard days at work, Mom, and I just got to make sure I'm there for her, you know, mentally, and I'm just not there physically, and that's... That's the hard part right now. I got to go, Mom. All right, bye. Okay, I love, love you. you. Bye. bye. I met Dale Kicken through JJ. My intentions were to claim my grandfather's body. That was Dale's job. Dale was the perfect guy to be in my corner. We got one shot at this. As far as the court was concerned uh, up in Kern County, their big issue there is we have a body. We need to have someone take the body or give us permission to dispose of it or intern it ourselves. The code section in California basically talks about if there aren't any identifiable immediate relatives, then it would be the next of kin. When you have contact with 
as you did with the sheriff, that tends to diminish the trustworthiness of the attorneys that are representing you in the eyes of the sheriff. So it's best to uphold the attorney-client privilege uh, and to uh, preserve your right not to speak, not to give testimony by having an attorney who makes statements for you and who has contact with officials. So to underscore that, I would say, please do not have further contact with any of the authorities, be it the sheriff, be it the, uh, the Corcoran facility, mm -hmm. court clerks, judges, mm -hmm. so. So I've got, a, I've got you to help me protect myself from me. Exactly. Yeah. The county council up in Kern County did a very good job of uh, exploring the issues and the possible claimants. There were Michael Channels and Matthew Lentz. We believe that a uh, will that was prepared by Mr. Channels may, under California law, uh, be deemed to be conclusively the product of fraud and therefore invalid. So we've, we've laid the groundwork for that determination. Matthew Lentz, who you had a circumstance with many years ago where his DNA was compared with yours, having the presumption that you, in fact, are the son of Charles Manson Jr., who was, in fact, the son of Charles Manson, that uh, your DNA would be a good guideline to compare with his. Yes. And as I understand it, the determination was that you couldn't possibly be relatives. Yes. Which would mean that he couldn't possibly be a relative of Charles Manson. Piece of my grandfather's going to go down in history. We don't need to have people spread my grandfather's ashes all over the United States, and it's going to end now. The next problem would be who else is an heir that might be claiming. Uh, so we need to see who else might be out there. Uh, we want to err on the side of giving notice to everyone possible. Charles Manson, you know, my former guru lover. I lived with him for two years and the family. Mary Bruner was the first woman I believe that Charlie met in San Francisco. She adored him and she had his baby, uh, which we named, well, he, we named him Pooh Bear and I was there at that birth. So if there is an heir that has a greater right because they're closer than you are, mm -hmm. For instance, if there is a son yeah. uh, that makes the claim, his right would be greater than yours. There's only one person generally acknowledged to be Charles Manson's son alive, which was my client, Michael Brunner.